Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and some time ago I made a t-shirt quilt. Well, it's high time I get that quilt quilted, and I'm going to quilt it using one very long ruler and a bar of soap. The first thing I'm not going to do is add a batting. The t-shirts are heavy enough on their own, plus I had a fusible interfacing to stabilize them, which gave it some weight on its own. So the quilt is already quite heavy. So I'm going to put just a nice big cotton back on it. Now I'm going to use this dark black with this gray on it. The reason is, is if I was to use a light color, you would see all of the stitching and all of the patterns come through that fabric. So I do not want a fabric that is opaque. I want it completely covered. Usually when we put the batting inside, that covers the front piece. But in this case, I don't have that, so I'm using a dark back. And you can also use a flannel back. Whatever backing you have, I would recommend you wash it and dry it. And that way it will shrink the same as the t-shirts. The t-shirts have already been washed many times, so they've already done whatever shrinking they're going to do. So it's good to make sure that no shrinking happens on the back. That way the quilt will look nice from both sides. You still need to attach your backing onto the front. You can use whatever method that you are most comfortable using. I like to use a fusible so that all those pieces are together and I don't have to have pins come in my way. So I have my two layers together. The next is deciding thread colors. And because there's so many different color t-shirts in the quilt, I need to have a thread that is going to work with all colors. When I have a situation like that, I use a color which I would call light or medium army green. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but that's the color that it looks like to me. So in this case, I'm using Aurifil 2370. And I find that it blends really well with all of the colors. It's not too bright on the blacks. It's not too light on the lights. And all the colors just seem to blend well with this color. And it's going to look great on the back. And to quilt this quilt, I'm going to be using a walking foot and straight stitching. And it's going to be very quick and easy. To mark the quilt, I'm going to use a nice big yardstick. Now you can get wooden ones, and this is a metal one that I got from the hardware department. The next thing is going to be a bar of soap. Now this bar of soap is nothing special. It's just a bar of soap. I wait till it gets nice and small and then I keep it in my sewing room because I want a nice sharp end all the way around. Now the little bars of soap that you get in motels are also a good size to use. What's great about the soap is the marks that I put on I know are going to wash off. So I have no worries about markings staying on. The soap will mark almost all colors. The only one would be a very, very white. But the t-shirts have been washed quite a few times, so they faded a little bit. So most of the mark will still mark even some of the whites. And I want each one of these blocks to have a big X in the center. That way that the back fabric and the front fabric are going to stay together. I won't have this pillow effect. So I'm going to stitch from one corner all the way down to another corner. And I'm going to go right through the corners of my quilt blocks. And line up that ruler because it's nice and long. And if it's not thin, you can always shave it down with a knife. And mark. And you can see how well that marking works out. So I'm going to do all of my rows going in one direction first. And when I stitch this, I'm going to go right to the edge of the quilt. This has a nice big border on it, and I'm going to stitch that border at the same time as I'm going to do the quilt. To set up the machine, I'm going to use a walking foot. And this is going to help keep those layers together so that they don't shift. I put my thread on the top and the bobbin, and I'm going to make my stitch just a little bit bigger. If you have a 2.5 normally, I'm going to go to a 3. Start in one corner and stitch down through all of these squares. 
So the first row of stitching is going to go right through the center of that block. And I'm going to be able to continue going through all the centers. The next one I'm going to go through two shirts, then I'm going to continue as I go up. When I'm doing diagonal lines on such a big quilt, when I get into the center, they're going to be very, very long seams. I find standing up is the best. At least it works for me. So I'm going to be able to maneuver my fabric a lot better under the machine. I'm going to be able to take that one row that I'm going to work on and I can straighten the quilt up right here, right before I get to the machine. Then I can slide it over. If I need to put the weight of the quilt somewhere, I can either use a chair or something right beside me and that's going to make the extra bit of the quilt stick on that side so I'm not trying to hold it while I'm quilting. I can put my arm underneath and I can start. So I have my pedal right underneath me, not underneath the machine. And I start. I don't need to have my hands on top of the quilt. I'm going to hold the quilt up and let the feed dogs do the work. And I'm just going to drive it. When I get so far, I can rearrange the quilt and continue just with my hands underneath the quilt. I'm able to stand quite far away from the machine because I'm going to let the feed dogs do the work, not me. I'm able just to direct it from here. And standing, well, it's easy for me to move whenever I need to. And I'm not doing that many rows of stitching. They're just long rows of stitching. And as I get to the edge, I'm going to be able to put my hands on the top. There are different ways you're going to be able to quilt this. You can start at one corner and go up right to the center, then turn the quilt around and take that center and continue going to the other side. You can start in the center and go out or just go all the way down. Whatever is most comfortable for you is really the right way to quilt this. I've stitched right to the center line. I'm going to turn it around and continue stitching to the other end. I now have 12 long lines going on the diagonal and now I need to do the other 12 going on the other angle. I'm going to do it the same way. And once those cross seams are done, I'm going to stitch right down the center of this sashing, going in both directions. And with all that quilting done, what you have is a nice big square with a cross through it and a little star. The back looks nice and the front is done. Finish off with your favorite method of binding. Because the quilt does not have batting in it, you do not need to heavily quilt it because you're not trying to hold the batting inside the quilt. You're just holding that back and the front together without it billowing once it's been washed and used. So you can add as much quilting as you want just for the appearance. Regardless if you find it's easier to sit at the machine or stand at the machine for those long lines of quilting, it is an easy pattern to do. Your cross sections, horizontal, vertical, and you're done. Be sure to love your machine and give it a good clean and an oil. You can also clean that walking foot. Make sure it's clean of any lint and thread and you can clean the feet and the entire thing with some machine oil so it'll be ready for your next project. So the last thing I have left to do is the binding and I'm going to do that right away because I know there's one girl who's going to be very happy to get her quilt. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe, and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sign room. Bye for now.